Hi, I'm Sanjay Mujumna. I'm a plastic surgery consultant from Yorkshire in the UK. Um, and for this medicine in a nutshell talk, I thought we'd talk about syringes, needles, and intravenous cannulae, which are commonly called venflons uh, after a trade name in the UK. So syringes come in a very wide range of sizes. As you can see, this one's a one mil syringe. So this entire thing just only holds one mil all the way up to 60 mils. The most commonly used ones are 10 mils, 5 mils, 20 mils. So you've got a wide range of sizes of syringes. Now, the other thing about syringes is that the tips uh, actually vary. So these are just normal tips where the, sir uh, the needle will just plug into like that and you take your needle out while You've got these other tips which are called lure lock, which is essentially screwed in. So if you do that, you need to screw that in, and that's actually quite secure. It's a blunt nip, blunt tip needle, so it won't hurt me. That is nice and secure, um, and sometimes we want to, to use that. Now, there's some other syringes available. There's this one, which is not um, really used for intravenous work. It's called a bladder syringe, and this fits into things to wash out. So larger tubes, if you want to wash out something surgically, that's a bladder syringe. You can see the tip is somewhat different from these and tends to be much larger. Um, then there's the insulin uh, syringes, and the insulin syringes actually have an inbuilt needle so that the needles right um, as integral part of the syringe and it goes up to a much a smaller calibration it gives you units of insulin as you're drawing up and the needle is very very fine indeed and this is for diabetics when they're injecting themselves with insulin uh, and the final type of needle is uh, sorry syringe i apologize is this here which is got a, what you call a reverse lua lock so unlike this where you've got the lure lock on the inside this has got a reverse of female lure lock and that fits into um, tubes and so for enteral feeding so again not for iv but for um, feeding patients through uh, a an, an nasogastric tube and so on so that tends to be used in a, in a different setting so let's talk about needles now these are the needles that we used uh, attached to syringes for uh, intravenous medications or for injecting local anesthetic, any any anything of that sort. Now needles come in a wide variety of, of sizes and they're a bit color coded um, and the color coding gives you an idea of the size. Now the size of the needle is uh, measured in gauges and the funny thing about gauges is that the larger the number the finer the needle i.e the smaller the caliber of the needle. The gauge doesn't tell you the length of the needle, so the packet will tell you the length. So this, for instance, is a very fine gauge needle. This is a 26 gauge needle. And this one is a 25 gauge needle. And in our hospital, all the brown needles are 26 and the um, uh, all the orange needles are 25 gauge. This one's a 23. And this is, as you can see, slightly bigger. I know they look like the different lengths, but the length is not uh, determined by the gauge. It's actually the size of the needles, you know, how much fluid can go through it in um, one push. And then you have this one, which is a 21 gauge. And this big beast of a needle, that's a 19 gauge needle. So you can see that they're getting fatter as, as they go along, as you start rolling around on my table. Now you also have all of these uh, a beveled needles, so they're quite sharp and one has to be careful. And you've got this which is a, a blunt needle and this is a drawing up needle and you use that for drawing up um, any medication, so any liquids really. And you can also have this which is also another drawing up needle, but this is plastic, so unlike that which has a, a metal shaft. Now these four needles don't have any particular safety devices attached to them. When you finish with them, you throw them straight into the sharp spin. This um, green and uh, blue one, which uh, the 25 gauge and the um, 19, has this little device, which is a safety device. When you finish, you do that and it clicks in and you can't bring it out. So that these things are made to reduce needle stick injuries. So 
in the hospital they work in get an idea of the color coding as to which color that designates which caliber of needle and gives you an idea as what you're about to stick into your patient. So terribly important to remember that if you have a needle without the safety sort of locking thing on it to prevent needle stick, don't resheath it. Eh? This resheathing action, one day you'll be tired and you're going to end up sticking your finger with it. This is a blunt one, so I'm demonstrating. But if this was sharp, gone into my finger, I would have a needle stick injury. So never resheath it. Take the needle and put it straight into, you hear that sound? Straight into the sharp spin. So now we're going to talk about um, intravenous cannulae or venflons as is commonly known after trade name in the United Kingdom. Okay, so you can see that the intravenous cannulae all have different colors. These are again color coded much like the needles and, and each color designates a particular caliber of the needle. You can see the needles have different lengths and the, the smaller the caliber, the, the smaller the length of the needle, but that's not the point. The point is what is the caliber of the, the little plastic tubing that you're going to leave inside the patient, which will determine how um, much fluid you can give in a period of time. So this is a 22 gauge, this is a 20 gauge, this is a 18, that's a 16 and that's a 14. And much like the needles, the smaller the number, the larger the cannula. And you can see that this 22 versus this 14, there's a huge difference in size and you would want to use this in a larger vein because you couldn't use this in a smaller vein, it'd be much too, too large and where you want to um, give fluid at a fairly rapid rate, this you want to use for a smaller vein, possibly a pediatric patient um, and once you have put this into the patient and you can see our video on how to put in a cannula, you then withdraw the stilet which is the metallic bit that you can see here or you can see here, 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 and here, and leave the cannula. So the stilet or the troca is withdrawn, the cannula, which is the plastic bit, is left behind. Now, in the old days, when you took the troca out, then you have this pointy thing that could hurt you, but nowadays you've got a very clever little mechanism which sheets the pointed bit of the, the troca, which is a, like a needle, so that you don't hurt yourself. Notwithstanding that, once you've taken this out, very promptly take a sharp spin and put it. Did you hear that? It's gone into a sharp spin. And then that's left with a little plastic cannula, which is which goes inside the vein and sits nicely for you. Okay, and this bit here, you attach on whatever fluid you're going to give. And if you're not going to give a fluid, let's just borrow this bung, you can put a bung on it to prevent obviously bleeding across. Now there's another little device called a butterfly because it looks like a butterfly with the wings which has just a needle which you can put into a vein um, but it doesn't leave you with a plastic cannula it's just a metallic needle and it's for a much more temporary uh, yeah, installation of fluid. You can sometimes put that into in a subcutaneous area as well if you um, require but this is much more temporary than the venflon uh, or the intravenous cannula. Remember that once you put intravenous cannula you need to document when you've put it and that it must then be taken out after a stipulated period of time as designated by NICE guidelines to reduce the risk of um, IV site infection. Thank you very much. Yeah. So, and that, uh, dear viewers, uh, syringes, needles, and intravenous cannulae or venflons in a nutshell. Thank you very much.